I am Nimosini. You found a niche of my vast domain. Okay, I grew up in a totally harmonious, beautiful 19th century small city in the Midwest. And I loved it, it made me happy, it was safe, it gave me security, and every piece of it is gone. Not just my house, not just my second home, my cousin's home, not just my grandmother's farm, not the structures, but for blocks around it, all gone, gone, gone. It's shopping malls, Sears stores, parking lots, Anyway, it's very difficult for me to deal with beauty being replaced by soullessness. And it's haunted me all my life. And so the poems I'm going to read tonight are trying in an attempt to deal with that loss. Memory prints on paper that isn't sold in stores. Quality varies. Sheets tear easily. Inks aren't always waterproof or UV resistant. Images ebb and flow kings into queens, hearts into spades. She's willful, walking on a leash and rolling over and playing dead aren't options. Careless, sometimes lazy. She doesn't clean out her closets. Her rings have missing stones. She gives with one hand, takes with the other. Coyote is her delivery boy. Tigers live in her gardens. Her nights have too many stars. What's left without? Tiny things, traces of lace, not much, not enough, nothing really. Leather trunk treasure floating in a flooded basement, sugar frozen hard in my mother's sugar shaker. My grandmother's farm reclaimed by the land, wild wheat waving in the wind, all structures dust to dust. Ghosts of roses, orchards, pumps with tin cups tied, colliding aimlessly in clouds, gnats disordering the sun. Treeless, barren streets, stunned and empty-eyed, staring back on every side, where fireflies once made a difference and those I loved laughed and cried. Backyard barns and leafy alleys, swept away by a dark magician for his box of things that disappear, leave holes in my heart, shock like missing limbs. On every plain, absence reigns. Within everything needed to sustain. Rising out of ruin, the soul of each lost without inviolate, serene. Trees still tall, secretive and wise, sheltering all. Front porch laughter, schoolyard swings, lilacs still growing, summer rain still falling, all the holy things. The well. The grasses of my garden are tall, Walking through them weaves a wave. Dove song falls like quiet rain. Time and space are yellow gold, marked by measuring stones of honey, strands of sweetness twisting through the air. A well is there, an old opening. Mouth overrun by tiny flowers, compelling, sweet-smelling, begging to be explored. Hidden in happiness, living lightly like a mouse, forever free from being found by even the most clever claws, I kneel in the grasses, part the flowers, look down. See my father's string, thick, cream-colored, soft enough for a bird's nest, rolled into balls, wrapped round bits of wood, strands tied together with tiny knots, never tied without reason. Beauty not their purpose, but always their essence knots from the center of my father's breathing, his way of showing me when to pull tight, how to hold firm. My mother's bright bouquets are there, made fresh each morning for her window sills, sweetly scented by her innocence. Her box of silk embroidery threads, elegantly arranged in perfect patterns, shimmers like a rainbow, colors softened by the passing shadow of her hand. I reach my arm into the depths, strands of treasure appear. I wrap them around my neck. They glitter and curl about my throat. A necklace ordered by my father's knots, 
soft rosettes caressing the stems of my mother's bouquets, my sister's laughter dancing about them in random pattern, drops of moon reflecting light, a bright surprise. Each time a line is cast, riches rise up of their own accord. The way of the well, I will never wear the same necklace twice. No judges live in the well, only dancing girls, young men balancing balls, mothers watching, always alert. No bitterness is here, no fear. The well does not respond to questions, to salutations of any kind. It simply stores, keeps everything watered so it won't wither. All is healthy here, lives on as it was when it entered, in full bloom in its prime. At night, the depths grow denser, fill with glowing nighttime things, owl calls, moonlit faces laughing, everyone I have ever loved. And this last one is about my family and my grandmother's farm that was so important to me. That is all gone. Everyone is gone, the farm is gone too. Endless sto stories in the grass. Endless stories whisper in the grass, lost in an empty field, blown by the wind to the river and back again, time no longer tied to space. Looking for the house where they were born, wooden walls painted yellow, hearts to welcome them home, as if they still hoped to find an apple orchard, a tin cup tied to a pump, as if no one has died. John and Anna Marie lived in a house on a riverbank in an old world, took a long journey with their three children to a better life, a fresher river, built another house on another river, painted it yellow in a new world. After five more children, John died on the road before the picket fence at the front gate walking home from work long before I was born. Anne Marie lived another 30 years, shaded her front porch with roses, cooked on a black wood stove, slept in the parlor. Her eight children filled the kitchen day and night. Two rooms were all she had. It was hard to hold herself together. On summer nights, her coal oil lamp led her to the river, behind her yellow house to be alone. An island of light in the night, a beacon to the God she believed in, roaming above her between the stars. Her heart was tied to rivers, a German village on the Volga, rebuilt along new banks in a new land, whose language she never spoke, whose clothing she never wore. She grew old in a long black skirt, a man's suit jacket, black head scarf, gave me sugar cookies on summer Sundays, taught me Dankeschön, the only words we ever exchanged. Albert and John James flew away young, taking their stories with them, didn't return even on Christmas. I never heard their voices. Susie and Barb grew roses like their mother, married young, each with one daughter. One married her cousin danced to an accordion band the night of her wedding. Her long white gown was covered with money, pat pinned there by every partner. Her mother was proud. The other daughter never married at all, worked as a clerk in the same office for 50 years, like a mouse, burst out like a meteor on cruises around the world each year, falling to earth upon return. Her mother wondered why. I knew them all. Paul worked in a flour mill, was prone to rage, slapped, on the ca slapped cards on the table when playing poker, swearing at his brothers as if they were enemies, all of them laughing, called Sambo because he lived in the black part of town swearing at his brothers, uh, excuse me, called Sambo because he lived in the black part of town, the only place he could afford to own a house, the only brother who did. I was afraid of him. Ralph was the youngest, wore spats, knew he was handsome, didn't marry for a long time, never joined in the card games. The only one from the yellow house to finish high school, respected, also suspect as a loyal brother, because of his white collar, was not renamed. I never knew what he was thinking. Joseph George, Uncle Doc, because he worked in a hospital, never left home, was with Anna Marie until she died, lived on alone in the yellow house as the Volga Deutsch world of his childhood 
melted down around him, family by family, house by house. He kept $100,000 under a board in the kitchen, distrusted banks until robbers broke in, tied him to a chair above his life savings. Finding nothing valuable inside, they only stole the car, never thought to take up the floor. He almost never spoke, neither hello nor goodbye nor anything in between. I was in awe of him. George Joseph was my father, called Oli. I never asked why. His ears stuck out, his hands were gnarled, even as a young man. He wore his sister's outgrown shoes, tied blades to them to skate on the river when the yellow house was full, overflowing with life. He drove a delivery truck, saw my mother sitting on her porch, bought her a white gold watch, married her when she was 18 and he was 26. He lived life on his own terms, facing death. He chose to remain at home, died alone there in the middle of the night as he always wanted. He gave me everything he had, although it took me years to know it. I loved him. <laughs> On Sundays, I walked through time with my mother and father, from home where ways were new to the river where ways were old. We could see the yellow house as we crossed the bridge. I climbed the apple trees, ate grapes from the arbor, sat on the porch next to the cup on the pump, shaded from the sun, lulled by the hum of my father and his brothers and sisters speaking German with their mother. Children come home, filled with stories known only to themselves and the wind that blew soft against my face, gathering from us all as it wandered through the grass from the yellow house to the river and back again. <laughs>